I want to thank Best Buy for sponsoring this video. So here we are in 2023 to review TVs, and we have all the information from back in CES where we had a lot of exciting time with the companies to figure out what was coming in 2023, but it still makes me think there's a lot of value in 2022 TVs even now. And I have four of my good friends here to help me explain some of these things in detail because you can only hear it so often from me. So I'm gonna give each one of these guys an opportunity to explain some of their favorite things about 2022. I'm gonna end with Stop the FOMO who has two really good points with regards to pros for buying TVs from 2022. And then I'm going to finish with a couple of value TVs because everybody always tells me that I don't give enough TVs that are in the lower ranges, but I have great opportunities for you guys to buy lower price TVs that are fantastic. So stick around to the end. But first I want to give Brian from Brian's Tech Therapy an opportunity to show you guys what he does when he goes through the Best Buy walkthroughs and especially talk about the LG C2. So here you go. As we pan over to LG, you have your B2 and your C2. To further complicate last year, for me, the C2 came in as the first panel I had seen, followed by the G2, then the S95. What's interesting is by the end of the year, the C2 was my TV of the year, simply because it did everything very well, and it was an amazing value with so many sizes from 42 to 83. So it started off the year as being, ah, that's okay, to being the best value. And when you look at the price of the 77 inch, it's unbelievable that this price is here. That's a C2 there. Look at that price. For a 77 inch OLED guys, the C7, $15,000, C8, $12,000. Not that many years ago. There you actually have the QNED lineup, which I wish they would follow up with. It is IPS and it is a very good display, a very good first effort. Here's the only one they have left. I really wish they were bringing more of that this year. Mini LED, great viewing angles. It is IPS. I wish it was VA, but it does look VA in nature. So I want to follow up with what Brian said, but first I want to show you how to get here. So we're at bestbuy.com and if we go in here and we click on the top deals and we get into the TVs and projectors, it actually takes you into all these different uh, TVs. There's even wall mounts, there's all kinds of good stuff, but this is really the best way to find all the deals. And then if we click into the LG C2, which is the one that Brian was talking about, it really is exactly how he described it. It's something that we know what it's gonna be, we know it's gonna have a little bit of improvement year over year, but then when we start seeing all the different TVs, and at the end of the year, we're like, wow, you know what, the LG C2 was really good, and then you look at the price. And this LG C2 77 inch is $26.99 here. This is about $1,000 less than OLEDs were this time of year for the last three years or so. Normally, they're about $3,500 for a good, OLED TV at the 77 inch range. This is $26.99 for an LG C2 77 inch. And you can actually look at sizes as small as 42 inch. And they actually have the 42 inch size here for $8.96. So they're really awesome. We have a 48 inch version of this, um, but whatever size you may need, if you want a great OLED, this is fantastic. And I, I wanna thank Brian for that. And I just wanna let you know, if you need more clarity with regards to these TVs, you're still not sure which to pick, go in the description below to be the installer.com and click on the actual TV quiz that we've set up. And when you're there, you can just go right through, start the quiz, decide if you know you have a bright or dark room or a mix of both, kind of go through these questions one by one, selecting your distance and what kind of content you may watch, what brand preference you have and all that budget. And then it's gonna give you the best TVs for your viewing conditions. It'll have one, but then below it'll have a few more and you can click on any of these directly here and it'll take you to bestbuy.com where you guys can purchase these TVs right away. And that does support the channel. So definitely go to betheinstaller.com forward slash quiz Check this out, take the quiz, and I hope it helps. And the random choices that I put in brought me to the Samsung QN85B, and I wanna actually go to KG with Tech with KG in order to explain what he thought about the 2022 Samsung lineup, specifically the top two QLED TVs, and I'll come back to those in a second. Now, Samsung was one of the ones that really came out and just pumped up the QN90B as being a really good step up from the QN90A, making the local dimming better with the new backlight system, as well as doing some extra processing features, which they actually did a really good job on with the QN90B. Now, there is a lot to be said about the QN90B from the QN90A. I do think that there was a significant step up from the QN90A to the QN90B, especially in the local dimming area with game mode in mind. There was a lot less backlight delay and I also felt like the backlight system was just more precise 
and more OLED like than ever when it came to the actual performance of the TV. When it comes to the mini LED technology, I don't think it's quite all the way refined yet, but Samsung is kind of leading the pack when it comes to pushing that technology to its maximum ability. So I really like the QN90B. I think they delivered that very well. And I think the QN85B was something that I can really say was a great step up as well. For being an ADS panel, it actually competed with the QN90B, which I found kind of mind blowing to be honest with you. And when these two TVs are straight on viewing, you can barely tell them apart, except for in certain scenes where the QN90B definitely gets brighter. So what he's saying is basically, Samsung does really have the best QLED TVs, the backlit TVs, and they have two really good ones. One is the Samsung QN90, and this one here, the 90B, is $2,700 for an 85 inch TV. So if anyone's looking for like a $3,000 TV or less in the 85 inch size, there's no question that this is the best opportunity. And I remember earlier in the year when one of my friends was asking me for, you know, best 85 inch TV under the $3,000 range. And this one wasn't even close because I believe it was like 4,000 or even more. And now it's down to $2,799. So you're not gonna get a top Samsung QLED, this new version of 2023, that's gonna be anywhere near this price. And you can get these on bestbuy.com right now. So if you're looking to get that, go ahead and check the links out here. And if you wanna know the difference between that one there and then this one, the QN85B, it's just slightly different panel. This one might not be quite as punchy, but I really like this TV. And you can get a 55 inch version of this, a top QLED TV for 1099. So that's a really good price, just over a thousand bucks and they kind of go up from there, but even the 65 inch version is only $1399, which again, this is expensive to a degree, but relative to some of the other TVs and some of the other sizes, it's a really good opportunity if you need a 65 inch TV, if you're upgrading from like 10 years ago, this will blow out you know, your Pioneer Plasma or your Panasonic Plasma. These TVs are fantastic and I'd highly recommend it. But one question or comment that I get all the time is, well, Samsung doesn't have Dolby Vision, so I would never pick a Samsung. And even though I don't think you have to have Dolby Vision to enjoy a Samsung TV because of how good they are, my friend Classy Tech Calibrations has a different take on that, showing some of the more technical sides of Dolby Vision versus HDR, HDR 10 Plus, so I'm gonna let him take it here. So we're gonna break down a real scene in a real movie showing what Dolby Vision is actually doing on a G2 that is completely calibrated for both HDR10 and Dolby Vision. So we're gonna start off with Dolby Vision fully calibrated on the bottom right and HDR10 fully calibrated on the left. And then on the top right is HDR10 with dynamic tone mapping. Now, what you could already see in that first slowdown is with Dolby Vision, the brightness of the highlight is not as bright as the HDR10 on the left, but you're getting more detail Detail. And then with dynamic tone mapping on the top, that's the dimmest of the three because it's trying to tone map so much that it's reducing a lot of brightness. However, that's in a particular frame or scene where the brightness is more than what the TV is capable of. Here, we can see Dolby Vision showing the most detail on the face. HDR10 is clipping the cheeks a little bit. And then dynamic tone mapping is really pushing the brightness on the face too much, really blowing it out. Dynamic tone mapping will also raise everything else, so the shadows in the back and whatnot are brighter than they're supposed to be. So what this is demonstrating is that even if you have a bright TV, Dolby Vision still is beneficial in retaining and showing the proper amount of detail, and it should be that way on any TV that is properly able to show Dolby Vision correctly, and that's an issue with some of the previous TVs, but something like the Sony A95K and the LG G2, they do a really good job with Dolby Vision now. So as you can see, a little bit more technical than some of the stuff I do, but it's a great opportunity to see the differences between Dolby Vision and just HDR10 and HDR10 with tone mapping, different ways that you can watch the TVs. Now, maybe you wouldn't notice some of these things with the other TVs not there, but it just goes to show you that there is a benefit to having Dolby Vision and a couple of great TVs that have them, like he said, are the Sony A95K. This was the QD OLED from Sony of last year. And of course, it did start out at like $4,000 when it came out. Now it's down to $25.99. So for a 65 inch TV, this is probably the best one that you can get right now. 
and it's a fantastic TV. So if you're like, I want the absolute best TV at 65 inch or 55 inch, then this would be the TV that I would recommend right now. And the other one that's a close second, or maybe it's even better if you want to wall mount your TV is the LG G2. Because first of all, that 65 inch is now $19.99 instead of $26.99. So you're saving $700, but they also have larger sizes, which is something that the QD OLEDs didn't have until this year. And so they have an 83 inch version of this for $47.99, which, you know, that again was $6,500, I believe, or maybe even more when it came out. So uh, that's a big discount. You can get the 77 inch for another $1,000 off from that. And you can get the 55 inch for $1,599. Again, the LG G2, the gallery series where you can wall mount it. It's very flat to the wall, looks amazing. And it's, you know, less expensive than that A95K. And it is very good, again, with Dolby Vision, comes with all the gaming features, a very popular TV, along with that LG C2 that Brian talked about earlier. And that brings me to Stop the FOMO. Really great TV reviewer. I followed him before I even started YouTube. And I'm going to let him talk about the reasons why you'd want to buy last year's TV. He makes two very good points. And the second point that he makes, I'll be following up with with some recommendations on the budget. TV. So here you go. Let's begin with the five pros, the five reasons I highly recommend getting last year's TV model, beginning with number one, which is for the same budget, getting last year's model gets you a larger size. For example, last year's Samsung Q85B launched at just under $2,000, 65 inch size. A year later, for under $2,000, it's 75 inches that you'll get for the Q85B. You see, after about a year, what was the price of a 65 inch at launch? It became the price, same model of the 75 inch. Waiting a year, getting last year's model gets you one size up for the same model, which takes us to number two, talking about TV budgets, right? If you're after a budget TV anyway, let's say under $500 for a 65 inch, definitely does not matter whether it was last year's TV or this year's TV. So little changes in the value TV segment. Under $500, there's not much they're going to add to next year's TV or the latest TV. Getting last year's TV not only gets you a larger size, really you're not missing out on anything new either. So if you are shopping a budget TV, Definitely look at last year's TV models. Now, even a tier up from budget, let's say mid-tier, let's say under $1,000. Again, next year's TV or the most current TV models maybe have some improvements, but the reality is most of the good stuff was there last year. Okay, so again, great advice from Stop the FOMO. And I want to go straight to one of the TVs that he's talked about a lot in the past. And that's the very popular A90K. The A90 series or A900 is always popular with Sony TVs. And normally six months to a year later, that TV is one of the absolute best buys you can get. And so there's an 85 inch X90K 85 inch for $2,000. And I think the next best one we talked about was the QN90B and the 85B. So that Samsung's that had, you know, they were like 23 and $2,600. Now this one's $2,000. It's about, you know, 80 or 90% of the way there with regards to brightness, but this does have Dolby Vision. So you're talking about really nice Samsung TVs, but now you're talking about one with Dolby Vision that Classy Tech Calibrations was speaking about. Here is a great opportunity to get a fantastic TV for under $2,000. And they do have this in sizes all the way down to 55 inch. So if you're looking for a 55 inch TV, this is $899. Fantastic. I like this in almost any room. It's probably best in a room that's not super bright or super dark, kind of just your living room TV or a gaming TV. I think it's fantastic. $899, great price. And the second point that Stop the FOMO was speaking about was the value of a good budget TV. Now I'm going to hit a few different TVs here. I'm going to start with TCL because they're typically known as a budget TV brand, although they have some great things coming out in 2023. But last year's TVs were fantastic and they had all kinds of TVs along the price range. Traditionally, the five and the six series TCL TVs are known as very good TVs. And they actually have a 75 inch five series TV with the Roku TV for only $7.99. So it's 
Very difficult to find TVs in this price range. If you go to Samsung, LG, or Sony, in this price range, you're not gonna get a TV that can perform as good as this TV. Much brighter, it has very good gaming features for this price, and overall, I would just recommend you go in with a brand like TCL if you're gonna be looking for something under $1,000 for 75 inch or larger. If you like the Google TV operating system, which is one that I like, I also recommend this TV. This is another five series QLED, and this is $899, and it has the Google operating system. So if it were me, I would probably get the Google operating system versus the Roku, but both of these are great TVs. They also have the 6 Series here, which is a little bit more expensive, but you can get a 55-inch 6 Series as low as $649, and they keep getting better each year, but again, fantastic spot to just say, that's my price range, I can afford this, it's a fantastic TV, and I'll bet you that it's gonna be better than any Samsung, LG, or Sony TV at that price point. Then another brand that's up and coming that I really like is Hisense. And again, they normally have a six, a seven, and an eight series. The six series is a 60 hertz panel, which is the more of the entry level. It's still a pretty good TV, but I typically like the 120 hertz panel. So one of my absolute favorite TVs from 2022 was the Hisense U7H. And right now, this 65 inch is 698. So for all my friends and family who are looking for a fantastic 65 inch TV, if they can afford this price point, I tell them, absolutely look for this. It's a Google Smart TV. It's really bright. It handles that blooming and backlight very well. You can game 4K 120 on it. It has Dolby Vision and it has all these great features. So awesome TV. I like Hisense. Again, a lot of people don't know the brand or they're not as comfortable with the brand, but this is going to blow those other companies out of the water with the price point and size, no question. And then if you wanna go just a little bit higher with regards to the brightness, the overall brightness, this Hisense U8H, which is just one step up, is a mini LED and it's $699 for a 55 inch. And my kids use this to game. It's so bright, it's really good. They love it for gaming. And a lot of people like that you can get a larger size for a smaller price. And this is more of a budget price, which hits both points that Stop the FOMO talked about. And if you wanna see the other three points to that video and the cons, go ahead and check out the links in the description. You'll see his channel and all the other guys' channels. The link's down in the description to the videos that we actually talked about. And before you go, I wanted to make one more point, which is if you're going to buy TVs at Best Buy, then you should definitely become a Best Buy Total Tech member. It is $200 per year, but the benefits are fantastic. You get free Geek Squad support 24 seven, which we've used multiple times with regards to computers because I don't know as much about computers. You get two day free shipping in most areas for all the different things that you buy on bestbuy.com. You get an extended 60 day warranty, which is one of the best opportunities because when you buy a new TV, 14 days from when it's set up or brought home, it's kind of hard to judge if you like it or not, but 60 days definitely can handle that. Two months to check it out, fantastic. And last but not least, you get an extended two-year warranty on everything that you buy. Everybody knows that everything that you buy breaks down after 12 months, which is typically the warranty. So now you have an extra year of protection. Definitely check it out. Become a Best Buy Total Tech member. And thanks for watching this video. Make sure to smash the like button on the way out, subscribe and all that, and I'll see you on the next one.